Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Tutorialini Test Prep. Today we'll be going over lesson number 15 on how to use Desmos for the digital SAT math. Solve most equations fast. Let's get started. Okay, so if you guys remember back in lesson number one, I showed you guys a way to solve an equation by graphing y equals the left hand side and y equals the right hand side. This way is really good. We'll talk about the differences in a minute. But, and I wasn't even going to make this video, but I went through and took a timed practice test recently, and I was using this method a lot, and I realized for lots of questions, this faster way can be really helpful. It saved me a lot of time doing timed practice. So, this really shines when you have these kind of like long, multi-step linear equations. So watch. All I'm going to do is type in the equation. So I'm going to do the first one. Negative 1 plus 7x minus 6, negative 7, minus x, equals 36. So now, the only downside of this is this graph doesn't really mean anything. But that's okay. If the question just wants the answer, um, we can click on the point, and it'll tell us the solution is 5, which is correct for this guy. So let me jot that down. x equals 5. So why don't you pause this video and see if you can solve it using this strategy now that you know what to do, solve the second one. Okay, so I'm gonna really quickly type in the second one. So I'm not gonna get any conceptual understanding from what's happening, but I will get the answer really quickly. And I'm just typing it in exactly as it's written. And I'm going to click, you can zoom out to see if there's more than one answer. Um, there's only one answer for this one. And it is 4, and that is correct. So x equals 4. So why would I have two videos on this? Well, there's some situations where this strategy just does not work. Okay, so if you see absolute values or lots of rational expressions, Desmos isn't going to give you the answer. It might if it falls nicely on a grid marker, but it's not going to give you the answer. So watch, let me show you. So this one, I got a lot of messy absolute values. And you see there's two solutions. And if I click on them, it's, it's not going to tell me what the solutions are. And sure, maybe for this one, you could zoom in and like read the grid marker. And I say, oh, it's negative one and maybe it's nine, but um, you might want to uh, not have that like introduction for human error, right? Like reading grid markers, especially if you're stressed on a test, can be kind of confusing, especially if the answer is like a decimal, like 0.5 or 0.25. So I wouldn't really risk, leave that up to chance. Plus, it doesn't give me any conceptual understanding of what's happening. So I'm actually going to go back and solve this one using the, the method that we learned in lesson number one. So go watch that video if you haven't already. So I'm going to do y equals the left-hand side of the equation. 4 minus x plus 3, 4 minus x. And I'm going to do y equals the right-hand side of the equation, 25. And I have to do a little bit more work, but you see... Not only do I have a clear idea of what's going on in this equation, the absolute value equation is, um, um, it's an absolute value equation with two solutions. And it, the absolute value looks like a V. Um, but Desmos tells me the answers are negative one and nine. If I click on them, it tells me the answers. Sometimes for whatever reason, when you have a really messy equation, it won't tell you the answer when you click on it. So just keep that in mind. I still think, the lesson number one strategy has a lot of merit to it. Um, so hopefully that explanation kind of made sense. So the positive solution to this one is nine. And I don't need to read the graph. I know for sure that it's nine because Desmos told me. So let's do one more from the digital SAT and we'll practice it doing the doing it the fast way. So pause this video, see if you can do it now that you know what to do. So in order for this to work, I can't use z, so I'm going to kind of just mentally replace all the z's with x's. So x squared 
plus 10x minus 24 equals 0. And OK, I click where it crosses the x-axis. And the solutions are negative 12 and 2. And it says to just put one of them, so why don't I just put 2? So as you can see, guys, this can be really helpful if you want to just save time. If you want to just, if you get a simple equation, you just want to make sure you're right, and you just want to type it in really quick to check. This is a really, really useful strategy. But don't throw that strategy out from lesson number one, because that will still be really, really helpful on harder questions. OK, that completes the lesson. Please like and subscribe for more digital SAT math content. If you are interested in my tutoring services, the link to my website will be in the description. I tutor all sections of the SAT and all math subjects from about 7th grade to AP slash early college level. Thanks for stopping by, and good luck studying.